the Montana Grizzlies have their backs to the wall. A double overtime loss in Pocatello has made each remaining game a must win. Today, the Grizzlies face a team that nearly beat them one year ago. A win today for Portland State would not only avenge last year's heartbreaking loss, it would also keep the Vikings' slim playoff hopes alive. Two teams in desperate need of a Big Sky victory, the Grizzlies and the Vikings, next. Fall day is on tap for those entering Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. Hello again, everyone. I'm Tom Cotts, along with Grady Bennett and Bob Hermes for today's Big Sky Conference football game between the 12th-ranked Montana Grizzlies and the visiting Portland State Vikings. And Grady Bennett, the Montana Grizzlies are coming off a tough loss in Pocatello, but if there was one positive to that double overtime defeat, it was the fact that the offense got cranked up. It looks like Craig Oaks has found his comfort zone. You're right, Tom. The Grizzly fans have been waiting all year for this offense really to get rolling. Well, last week it finally did, amassing over 500 total yards in offense. And it's Craig Oak, as you said, continues to improve week to week. He's going to look to his big time guys, and those there's three of them right now. The first is John Talmadge. Last week he had a career high in yards, over 150 receiving for the Grizzlies. He's averaging over 23 yards a catch right now. The other two guys that have really stepped up are Tate Hancock and Big Willie Walden. Willie is 6'7", 260 pounds. A tough matchup for any defensive back, especially in the red zone. It will be a tough matchup for the Montana Grizzly defense. If there's one thing the Grizz don't do well, it's defend the pass. They gave up 400 yards of passing last week in Pocatello, and Bob Hermes, the Portland State Vikings, have a great junior quarterback in Joe Weiser. He is good. He's hot and cold. He's from Tigard, Oregon. He's done a good job as a prep. Uh, learned his lessons last year as a sophomore, and he's ready to go. He's thrown nine touchdowns, but on the other hand, he's had nine inter or 12 interceptions. So the Grizzly defense is going to have to step up, and, and I'm sure Coach Houck has been talking about getting more pressure up front, because last week, they weren't able to bring much pressure, and they need to do that today. The last time these teams met last year in Portland. They produced one of the most memorable games of the entire 2002 Big Sky Conference season. We're set for another great matchup. Both teams need this game in a big way. We'll have the kickoff from Washington Grizzly Stadium when we come back. Today's game is brought to you by Universal Athletic Service for the athlete in all of us. CarQuest Auto Parts Stores. With over 4,000 CarQuest Auto Parts stores across North America, you'll find it at CarQuest. And Montana Ford. Check out the all-new 2004 F-150 at your Montana Ford dealer. It's another full house here inside Washington Grizzly Stadium on a gorgeous fall day. Not bad weather for late October here in Missoula and a big ball game as both these teams, the Montana Grizzlies, who come in with one conference loss, and the Portland State Vikings come in with two Big Sky losses, need this game in a big way. I'm Tom Cotts with Bob Hermes and Grady Bennett, but right now we're going to go down to the fourth member of our team. Our Brian Salmond is standing by on the field. We're going to him right now. Brian. Tom, how you doing? brought some of his rally fans to Washington Grizzly Stadium. We expected a very cold day down here, but it's not so bad. The field conditions are great. The only thing that should bother the Portland State Vikings, not the elements here, but this big crowd, 23,000 Washington Grizzly Stadium. The Montana Grizzlies average more than one in Division I, 2A. Maybe that will help them out in this game. Back upstairs to you guys. Well, thanks a lot, Brian. Portland State. No stranger to big crowds this year. While this is a tough place to play, they played at Fresno State this year, so they have played in front of a big crowd much bigger than what we've had here in Missoula so far. But the Vikings won the toss. They have elected to receive, and Chris Snyder set to kick it deep. You know, the other thing about that, Tom, I think it's important to understand is teams really relish the chance to come play here, and I think usually teams get up and probably play their best games right here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. Snyder, a low kick picked up at the three, to the 20 yard line, to the 30, and that's where the Vikings will take over. Nick Swan again on the return. Joe Weiser, we talked about him off the top, junior quarterback who bided his time as Justin Wood completed his great career as a Viking. He leads this Portland State 
offense. And looking at the rest of the offense for the Vikings. Along the line, it's Blatchley, Statuac, Owens, Hicks, and Aronson. Ryan Fuquay, their go-to guy. Jay Williams, Brown, Ahmad Robinson, the leading receiver, and Whitehead is a very good tight end. And the Vikings will start with three wide. Play action, no surprise, they're going deep on their first play, looking for Brown. Incomplete, nearly makes the catch. That'll tell you something, they go for the home run right off the bat, not wasting any time. The Montana defense today. C. Shea Pitcher and Tim Bush are the ends for the second straight week. Blake Horgan will not play out with that ankle injury. Verona and Cahill, the defensive tackles. Joel Robinson, Andy Thompson, and Brent Myers may not see a whole lot of linebackers if the Grizz go with their new nickel package. And the defensive backs, Smith, Edwards, Matt Lepsock, and, of course, Dave DeCoit. Now second and ten for the Vikings. Fuquay. Not a whole lot going. Good defensive surge that time by the Grizzlies. And one thing Coach Houck talked about earlier this week was the physical nature of the Montana players, especially on the first series. They really want to establish themselves, and they do a good job here. Fuqua is a good back, and they're going to have to contain him today, or he could run rampant on them. The thing about Ryan Fuqua is that no one, knows how to, no one exactly knows how to pronounce his name. He calls himself Fuqua. That's what we're going to call him. The coaches call him one thing, his mother calls him a different one. Fuqua, Fuqua, Fuqua is what we're going with for number 20. Third and long. Weiser on a rollout, gets inside Brent Myers, balls loose, Grizz have it. Fumble recovered. And that is just what Tyler Thomas. Just what the doctor ordered for Montana fans and the Montana team. We talked about pressure getting established with the physical nature, and they bring the house this time, and that uh, scares the quarterback out of the pocket, and out goes the ball, and the Grizzlies are in business. Well, the turnovers are obviously such a big part of every single football game, and they've hurt the Grizzlies the last two weeks. Last week against Idaho State, penalty, our, uh, turnovers caused some big problems for the Grizzlies, even the week before in that tight win over Weber State, the four turnovers. So hopefully gaining a turnover today will really get the Grizzlies offense off to a good start but Tom Grizzlies so far this year have really struggled in this area right here in the red zone they really need to come up with some points off of this turnover Craig Oaks has them spread out wide the man in motion is Heidelberger a reverse back the other way to Levander Seegers Seegers with a block from Corey Proctor is past the 20 and down to the 15 the Montana offense is led by junior quarterback Craig Oaks the transfer from Colorado had a big game last week Four touchdowns on the season, three interceptions. Two of those picks came a week ago in Pocatello. The line, it's a good one. McFarland, Rhodes, Decker, Skinner, and Corey Proctor at the right tackle. Had a tough week last week against Jared Allen from Idaho State. And the backs, Green, Talmadge, Hancock, Oliver, and big Willie Walden at tight end. Here's the delay to Justin Green. And a gain of three, four yards on first down. Defensively for the Vikings. Up front. Ratliff had a huge game a week ago. He was the Big Sky Defensive Player of the Week. Saga Polatelli, the man inside. The linebackers. Joey King is their leading tackler. Tuatelli is the leader on this defense. In the secondary, they are led by Abdullah. Grizz now, second and six. Again with Green. He's bottled up after a short gain. Well, I really like the way the Grizzlies are coming out. I like the aggressiveness of uh, Coach that Fennessey, the offensive coordinator. Abdullah. Really like the first play call there. Run the double reverse. You know, you, you know, you all week long you work on that. You prepare. The players know that's going to be your first your first play of the game, and they're excited about it. You come out, you get some success early. Uh, it just feeds off of that. And then the fact that they've run twice for eight yards. Hey, great thing so far, starting for the Montana Grizzly offense. Montana third and three. Two tight ends in the ball game. Left side, Green powering towards the first down marker, and he is short. And that will bring up a fourth and short situation. The tackle made that time. Steve Shinen in on the play. 
Well, they faked this time. They faked that little fly, that little uh, kind of that speed reverse that they've been running with Heidelberger, and then pitched it out. It was a pretty good play scheme, but Portland State did a nice job rallying to the ball and stopping him just short. And Coach Houck does not hesitate at all. It brings that field goal unit right in. And with Chris Snyder, why not? You know for sure it's a, th a three quick points. Snyder 4 of 4 a week ago in Holt Arena, including a 54 yarder that put the game in overtime. Snap is low. Dane Alver, good job on the hold, and the kick is up, and it's good. And Montana takes a quick lead 3 0 over the Vikings. Montana strikes first inside a packed house at Washington Grizzly Stadium. We'll be back. Ball going back to the Vikings. 25-yard kick from Chris Snyder capped off, capped off a five-play drive for Montana, and they're on the board first, 3-0. You know, Grady, we talked last week about bonus possessions. That one sort of was for the Grizzlies with the fumble. Do you guys look at that as a coach, you know, for the Flathead Braves? and? You got to look for those opportunities to get the extra points. Absolutely. And, of course, everybody in that situation, you'd love to have the touchdown instead of the field goal. But, like you said, you almost chalk it up as just a bonus possession. Hey, you get three points out of it. It's a cheap three points, and you'll take it. And so you build from there, and you hope it gains momentum and uh, gives confidence to both your defense and offense. And uh, you just keep rolling from there. Both these teams with turnover problems coming in, uh, both had a minus three in the turnover ratio before today's game. Montana, especially the last couple weeks, has really not won the battle of the turnovers, and it cost them a week ago. Snyder deep into the end zone, and Swanigan's going to take a knee. And again, at the 20-yard line is where the Vikings will start. We talked about turnovers, Tom. Actually, both these teams, I think, are seventh and eighth place in the Big Sky in turnover margin. And, and like you said, I mean, that's really a lot of times where football games are won and lost. So obviously both teams are really trying to uh, shore that area up, and right now the Grizzlies are coming out a little bit ahead. The wind is not blowing so far here at Washington Grizzly Stadium. It seems like the third quarter of the Hellgate Canyon starts to kick out some pretty nasty gusts usually, but so far, great conditions for a game. Vikings try to swing it out, and Tim Bush says, no way. Knocked down the line of scrimmage. Weiser was looking for Robinson on a quick screen, but Bush gets the hands up, and another big play from a great player. Bush has been an awesome player since he came to Montana from Kellogg, Idaho, and he gets up and knocks it down. Boy, that's a smart play by a defensive end. It is. You know, it's such a great read by him because he sees the quarterback taking that quick one-step drop to flare it out on that bubble screen, and he just gets his hands up. You know, offensive tackle's job is supposed to be to try to get keep his hands down, but Bush is such a good athlete, he's able to fend him off and knock it down. Taylor split far to the top side. Fuquay, the lone back, and number 20 gets it called. Gain of three, Dave DeCoy along with Joel Robinson and C.J. Pitcher making the play. One player on the Montana's defense I know that I, I got to believe is just challenging himself is Brent Myers. He didn't have a big game last week, but he's had some really big games this season. And I know as a senior, he's really concentrating on having a big day today for the Grizzlies. Pardon me, that wasn't Robinson. That was Tyler Thomas on that last play. Robinson just back into the game. Montana now with what's kind of a, re a revamped nickel package. Robinson, the only linebacker, and they're playing with seven DBs in an attempt to shut down Weiser, and here he is, and Weiser taken down. C.J. Pitcher got the first part, and Dave DeCoy cleaned it up. Well, one thing, Tom, that the Grizzlies are going to be able to do with this nickel package, if they're calling it that, it, it, like you said, it might be more of a dime package, but with the extra DBs, it is so tough for those offensive linemen to know. You can see right here on your monitor, there's a twist. C.J. Pitcher from his end position is going to twist, switch with the defensive tackle, and come on an inside stunt. There's a lot more speed for the offensive line to pick up. It's tougher to know where those guys are coming from, and a lot of times you can get a lot of pressure on the quarterback. So far, it's been successful for the Grizz today. Matt Langford. Gets off a horrible kick. Jason Delisal was just going to let it roll. And it takes a great roll for Portland State all the way down to the 43 of Montana. 41-yard punt. punt. He almost missed that ball off his foot, I think. Montana leads 3-0. We'll be back to Washington Grizzly Stadium after this. Montana Grizzlies now first and 10 from the 40. Six of Portland State. Green in the backfield along with Oaks. Green 
Seven yards on first down, and that's what Justin Green has given the Montana offense since he became the number one back three weeks ago. Tough yards up the middle, especially on first down, which opens up, Grady, the play calling for Rob Fennessy when you have a second and short. Absolutely. The, the key, really, as an offensive coordinator is always first down. What you gain on first down sets up everything. If you're constantly facing second and longs, it's so much tougher to play call. If you get into second and short, man, your playbook just opens up immensely. Green now 20 yards on five carries. Three wide to the near side. Talmadge on the bottom, Hancock in the middle, Heidelberger, the near flanker. Green again, lots of room. First down yardage. One thing the Grizzlies are, do so well, they, they're in shotgun and they're running a lot of things from the shotgun, but they still do, are able to, do, to use a lot of misdirection. You can see, I don't know if we get a replay on this or not, but um, you know, the direct snap you'll see, and Justin Green takes it, looks like he's going to the right, but then he'll plant and come back left. They're actually running a counter to the left side. So it's really tough for the defense. You'd think it might be easier out of the shotgun, but it's not. four-man front. Once again for Portland State. Oaks to a wide open green in the flat and he's cut down by Steve Shinen after a gain of three. You know, we talked last week how Justin can run around here or over you. That time looked like he was just content to take it right to the defensive back and run right over him. Well, the, big, the Grizzlies are leading the big sky right now in rushing offense, which I'm not sure when the last time that's happened. We probably have to go back quite a ways, but Coach Houck feels so good about his 1-2 punch. Actually, 1-2-3, although Waller hasn't played a lot. But Justin Green, as you said, can run over you. And then Lex Hilliard can kind of do both. And as he emerges as a true freshman, he can run over you, and he's got a little bit of juke to, to make you miss as well. Oaks changing the play at the line of scrimmage. The give to Green. This time, not a whole lot going. Brought down for no gain. Andrew Dorsey makes the tackle. i got to believe they're setting up a little bootleg there, too, or keeper with the quarterback, Grady, as they fake a little, you know, giving it to Justin. But sooner or later, Craig's going to keep that ball, roll out, and try for the end zone, I'm sure. Montana trying to make it one for two on third down conversions. And they've got eight yards to go. Oaks, all kinds of time. John Talmadge got behind his man, and the pass is off the money. He overthrew him. Talmadge had gotten free on the left side. And I think there might have been a little miscommunication here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it on this replay. It looked like all three receivers actually ran pretty nice routes. I know Levander Seegers up the middle really ran a good route on the safety and, and made him turn his hips, and he was open. But as you see here, the ball really falls in between two wide outside. There might have been a little miscommunication there. Ball spotted at the 35. Snyder on for the kick. It'll be 45 yards in the books if he puts it through. Perfect snap from Colt Palmer. And the kick is good. And Chris Snyder is flat out in a groove now. Four of four a week ago. Two for two early on here. And the Montana Grizzlies. 6-0 on two kicks from Snyder. Six zero off two kicks from Chris Snyder. And Snyder, we should mention. Two weeks in a row, he's been the National Special Teams Player of the Week in all of 1AA. This past week, he was also the co-Big Sky Conference uh, Special Team of the Week. But two straight weeks, he's been called the number one special teams player in all the country. And that drive was eight plays, 29 yards, and 3.06 off the first quarter clock in Montana. Good. Uh, Snyder good from 45, and the Grizz lead 6-0. Well, as you said, Tom, he is in such a groove right now. When you think about it, what is it, 117 consecutive PATs right now he's made? I mean, that's just incredible. He is uh, really confident. And what's good is, you know, for Coach Houck, I mean, you know anytime you get down anywhere in scoring range that you're, you're going to get almost an automatic three points. The kick he made a week ago at the end of regulation was sensational. Ryan Fuquay fields this ball, and that's eight yards deep. And he takes an eight. Vikings from the 20-yard line. Coming up at halftime, stick around. We're going to speak with uh, both the men's and women's head basketball coaches at the University of Montana. Pat Kennedy and Robin Selvig will join Brian Salmond on the field and talk about the upcoming season. Practice started last weekend for those clubs, if you can believe that. Uh, plus, we'll have the first half highlights and stats. And that's all coming up at the half. Two 
two backs behind Weiser. They give the few quay. Got the corner, cut it up. Good pursuit. Andy Thompson, Mike Murphy, Joel Robinson, Dave DeCoy all in on the, on the play. Well, and Vernon Smith right there from his corner position does exactly what the corner has to do. He comes up, keeps the outside contained. He's going to turn the play back inside for his pursuit to come make the stop. And he's had a lot of big hits this year so far for the Grizzlies. Several hit of the week categories, and you can see what you said. Makes him cut back inside. Weiser straight back in the pocket and with time over the middle. First down yardage. And that is Adam Whitehead, who is the number one target from the tight end spot. He came, came into this game as the third leading receiver for the Vikings. Really a perfect pass there as Whitehead comes across the middle, leads him perfectly in the first down. I saw him working on that play in, in pregame. It's interesting that they ran it right there. Nice play. You send your first tight end right up the seam to take the middle linebacker out of there. And then you run that second tight end, act like he's going to the flat. Then you stop him and bring him right back in replace where that first tight end went. Good little play call right there. Flag on the play. Flag's on the play. A fullback left a little early here. This may go against Portland State. Grizzly defensive end was also off, but I think they're going to say the fullback went first, although he can go in motion, so we'll see what they decide. Ray Willett with the call. Yep. He was arguing that. I can go in motion. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 84, five-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. So Whitehead, who just gave Portland State their first first down in the ballgame, uh, backs them up five yards with the with the miscue. With a penalty, first and 15 for Portland State. Both those tight ends look are... look at Tim Walsh, Portland State head coach. Excuse me, Grady, go ahead. I was just going to say both those tight ends are, are big kids. They're both athletic. They both catch the ball well. Again, a two-back set out of the eye. Weiser, complete near the 40-yard line. Tony Curtis, the other big tight end. Really a couple of bookends out there, as you said, Grady. Curtis goes 6'6", Whitehead 6'4", and uh, they've been a big part of this Vikings offense uh, to date. Well, and they line Adam Whitehead obviously up out of that uh, fullback spot quite a bit, but he's really just the second tight end, and they can use him, and they can jump into a two tight end set or uh, use him like right now. You see they line up in the I formation, and they'll, then they'll motion him either way. Uh, just two big tight ends playing in the game. They're, as you say, Whitehead in motion. They give to Fuquay, dances, and gets his way up to the 50-yard line. The thing about Ryan Fuquay, after you make initial contact, he's not that hard to bring down but you do not want him to get into the open field because this kid can flat fly. And a lot of people think, including, uh, of course, his coach, Tim Walsh, who's probably biased a little bit, that when he when he decides to play, when he comes with the right attitude, he's one of the best in all of 1AA. Remember, two years ago as a freshman, as a true freshman, he rushed for 1,500 yards and led the nation in yards per carry. He's learning to play with a target on his chest now as he's uh, entering his junior season midway through it. Fuquay again. Brian Fuquay, the ball. Three goes. yards. Well, Tom, and that's a great point that you bring up. I was fortunate enough to coach uh, Lex Hilliard uh, for the last three years at Flathead High, and, and he emerged as a sophomore and just had a huge year and set all sorts of records and, and, and such. And the next two years, you know, the target was on the chest, and it was a little bit different, and, and a player does have to adjust to that a little bit. Fuquay's numbers were down last year from that breakout all-world year as a freshman. Uh, nagged by an ankle injury, and they're down even more this year. As Portland State has really relied on the arm of Joe Weiser. And here he is again. Pass dropped at the 39-yard line by Ryan Brown. Two balls now thrown Brown's way, and both of them uh, have fallen incomplete. And there's a break for Montana there. The Grizzlies... We're having the Vikings put together a nice little drive and then second down, they nearly had a first down. Uh, Grizzlies brought pressure that time. Quarterback does a nice job of getting it off and just lack of concentration. Brown's really about the fourth option in this passing game, but he does lead the Vikings with touchdown receptions. He came in with four uh, on the year. Few play, as you see, tough day so far. Five carries, 18 yards. The Grizzly defense, as they have been all year, doing a great job against the run. 
Weiser coming near side. It's picked off by Vernon Smith. He stayed in bounds, and he's into Vikings territory. Ball goes to Montana on the pick by the senior corner, Vernon Smith. Excellent deep defensive play that time. He was kind of waiting for the ball. I think he anticipated a little out there, and he sat in. You can see the replay. He knew the ball was going to be thrown there, and he stepped in front. And what I like here, Grady, at the end of the play, he didn't step out of bounds. He tried to keep it going. Great play by Vernon Smith. And one thing, we've talked a lot about the Grizzlies being in that nickel defense so far today. And, you know, football really comes down to just numbers in the box. And I know that was a third and long situation, but the Grizz are only rushing three. At times today, you'll see them drop the nose guard and actually only rush two. It's pretty tough to try to throw four wide receiver routes into nine guys dropping into coverage, and that was the case right there. Montana starts by giving the ball right up the middle. Lex Hilliard was the first carry of the ball game, and it's a gain of just a half a yard. Tried to run a little counter there, bring the guard in across and kick the end out. The end did a nice job of closing that down and, and uh, cutting off the hole for Lex Hilliard. This defense uh, from Portland State has been up and down this year. Play great one week, not so great the next. They're coming off one of their best weeks of the season. They just gave up seven points uh, total to Sacramento State a week ago. So this is a unit that really thinks they have a lot of momentum. And in the same breath, the Montana offense, they have a lot of momentum coming into this game too. Heidelberger's in motion. Out of the gun. Looking right side, he's got a man across the middle. John Talmadge can't hang out. That was a tough read right there by Craig Oaks. He, he waits and hits the, uh, the in route coming there at five yards, but there was a linebacker sitting right there on it. If he does catch it, he's going to get smacked in the mouth pretty hard. So he might have heard of a little footsteps right there. It looked like Dane Oliver was open on the dig route about 10 yards further down the field. Opted for Talmadge. Talmadge, like we said, had a huge uh, game a week ago yardage-wise. He also had one big drop, though, that ended up being an interception for Idaho State. The Grizz here with their second chance now. Two turnovers that they've received from their defense. Really need to take advantage of this. Oaks to a wide open Willie Walden. And Walden's to the 30. And he's into uh, down to the 29-yard line and a first down. And a big catch and a big play from number one, a big guy, period. And a guy who's uh, becoming accustomed to making big plays. You know, and that's exactly what Craig Oaks has to do. As you mature as a quarterback, this is the key right here, moving the sticks. You're going to end up at times with, with third downs that you have to convert, whether it's third and long or third and short. And if you can move the chains, that's the key. Keep your offense on the field and keep the drive alive. Hilliard alongside Oaks. That's Dane Oliver in motion. The near side, Oaks is in trouble. Taken down, he had no clue that Steve Shinen was coming. And he uh, really got lucky he didn't take a bigger hit that time. Also lucky he didn't fumble the ball. He nearly did. And as you mentioned, a lot of pressure from the backside. He didn't see him. And that ball almost squirted out. Well, you're not sure there if it was a miscue by Lex Hilliard not picking that stunt up or if Craig just needs to make a better read. Anytime a defensive back blitzes like Shinin is right there coming off of the secondary, as a quarterback, you need to pick that up and see it and either check out or make sure you have the right protection scheme. Oaks now on a sprint out. Trying to get a block from Levander Seegers, who gave him a minute's time with a block on Shiner, but then Oaks level takes a big shot at the sideline as the leading tackler, tackler for the Vikings. Uh, excuse me, not the leading tackler, but the leader on this team, really, defensively. Tolo Tuatelli makes the play. Well, it's nice to see Craig Oaks gaining more and more mo mobility coming off that ankle injury, but you definitely don't want to see him taking shots like that anywhere on the field. Tuatelli is what... Tim Walsh says uh, is the center part of this defense, his middle linebacker, number 42, and he just put the hit on Oaks. Third and 11. Oaks with time, but nowhere to go, and now he's taken down. Flag comes in, possibly a face mask penalty coming, but the play made in the backfield, Andrew Dorsey with the sack. Good defensive coverage that time. they will take him out of field goal range at this point if they accept the penalty. Well, this might be a case here that Portland State did bring a blitz again. Holding offense, number 76. The penalty is declined, fourth down. I think the mistake that Craig makes right there, however, is he started to step up into the pocket, and if he just continues to step forward and either run with the ball or, or step up and look for somebody, he might be okay. But he, he backpedals and really runs right into that sack. Tyson Johnson, true freshman from Stevensville. Stands at his own 41.
good high punt. Backing Farino up to the 10, and a great play. The ball down at the one yard line by Jason Dallas Alba, I believe. My eyes are starting to go on me already. What a nice play. That time, as you mentioned, Tom. Yeah, that was Dallas Alba. Nice high kick by the punter. Special teams runs down and kind of defends the goal line, and they pin him into one. Well, the Grizzlies have received such outstanding play from their true freshman class this year coming in with Lex Hilliard and, and Kyle Sampson and just on and on. But as you look at Tyson Johnson, I mean, what a tremendous punter to come in as a true freshman and the, the things that he's done this year. Just a good recruiting job by uh, Bobby Houck in his first, first year. From their own half-yard line. Off the right side, and they get it backed out of at least the immediate trouble zone on a gain of two. Fuquay, the ball carrier. First uh, trivia question of the day from Don Adson Ford. The UM Golden Helmet Award that's given to the hardest hitter each year has several two-time winners. Who's the only three-time winner of the Golden Helmet Award? And we'll give you the answer after this play, so think quick. Whitehead in the backfield in front of Joe Rubin. And the give is to Rubin, and he is out near the nine-yard line. And Fuquay is back up with positive yards on second down. And the answer, Grady, you raised your hand. It no, wasn't you. Wait a minute. I want to go together with this. I think Grady and I both know. I think we saw him earlier, didn't we, Grady? I think we saw him earlier. No, it wasn't me. I would be the receiver of that. I, I might have been hit the hardest yeah, okay. in my oh, career. but He stopped oh. by and said hello to us. Yes, he did. All right, yes, well, who he did. is it? I got to go with Timmy Houck, the Tim, man. That's who's there it by. Is. Tim Houck it is. Third and short. Ruben, right side, and he's got first down yardage. Up over the 15, near the 17. Joe Ruben is the backup for Ryan Fuquay, and he has provided a lot of competition in training camp for, Fuque, for, for Ryan Fuquay. Uh, the one knock on Fuquay is that sometimes you don't know if he really totally wants to be there, if he has that drive and that desire. And Ruben is such a talent as the backup that he has pushed him to get better and to refocus because he knows that there's another option uh, for Walsh to go to if he doesn't perform. And Ruben now 11 yards on two carries. And they give again to number 23. This time met at the hole by Allen Signs, the sophomore defensive tackle. He did an excellent job getting off his block and making a nice play there at the point of attack. You talked about it, Tom. Coach Walsh for the Vikings all year long has been a little bit worried about week to week. This team has been really inconsistent, and Ryan Fuquay is a part of that. One week he's on, plays really well. The next week doesn't really look like he even wants to be there. That's the end of the first quarter. Not a whole lot of scoring, but it's a great ball game. Snyder has the Grizz up 6-0.